and welcome to another episode of the Otaku Experience over here on the Bread Network. I'm, of course, your host, Israel. So uh, I tried to film a video or an episode last week. Uh, something happened with the, the thing, and I was like, I'm not going to refilm it, and I'm not going to release a, you know, like a Frankenstein version of like a few segments. And I just decided I'm not going to do that. And so uh, some of those topics we're actually going to be talking about in this episode uh, because they were bigger than some of the stuff that came out this last week. Um, So this this is kind of like a mishmash. Also, if I sound nasally, uh, it's because I want to die. So every this happens every year where when the seasons change, um, my nose like tries to kill me. Uh, and, uh, I, I don't feel good at all, but, uh, you know, is what it is. Uh, my girlfriend's trying to get me to like go to the doctor about it. And I'm like, it's just a yearly thing. And she's like, no, you're dying. And I'm like, yeah, I am. But <laughs> also, I don't know what this is. This just kind of happened, uh, when I did my hair today, maybe I should, is it annoying? Anywho. So, uh, not this week. Well, one of them ended this week, but mainly last week. Uh, Shoshimin, uh, Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian, or as a lot of people in the community are calling it, Roshidere. Uh, and uh, 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 my dear friend Nokotan, I do. I swear the congestion's messing with my brain. Uh, they all ended, and then this week, uh, Senpai is an Otokonoko ended, and those are some of the anime I was watching in this anime season. So I want to give my quick thoughts on them since they've now concluded. So Shoshimin, uh, I enjoyed uh, quite a bit. Um, I think that it never really got to uh, the point that I thought it could have. There's like water on my forehead. Uh, it never really got to the point that it could have. Uh, I, I think some of the stuff was still a bit goofy as it went around, but towards the end, we got a really big, probably like four episode kind of finale, uh, with like one giant mystery. And I thought that that was really fun. Um, it was confirmed for a second season. It got announced last week with the ending of the show. Um, and I'm very excited to see that. And this is going to be coming out in, uh, the spring season, uh, of next year. Um, gosh, I can just hear how nasally I am. Um, (laughs) I, I, I sound so bad, but, um, uh, yeah, overall I enjoyed it. Uh, I still really enjoyed the vibes, the characters, the animation style, uh, the production, um, things like that. Uh, so I hope that the second season, I know that they're adapting from novels and I assume the novels are kind of like little things here and there. So maybe pick the more interesting mysteries or something, but I don't know. I still really enjoyed it overall and I had a good time and I'm excited for season two. Then, uh, Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian ended. Uh, and this one I thought, uh, ended kind of how it began just all right. Um, this one was also confirmed for a second season and this second season will be coming out, uh, sometime in the future, uh, just says that it's in production. Um, this is, uh, Doga Kobo, uh, and they're the studio also behind, um, Oshinoko and Alia performed on par, uh, with Oshinoko season two, at least for the most part. Um, as far as I know. Uh, and if that's the case, then Doga Kobo might do something where they fast track season two, like they did with Oshinoko season two. And we could be getting Alia season two sometime next year, uh, if not like early 2026. Um, but going back to like how I actually felt about the show, it ended about how it began just fine. Um, I was a little upset that they didn't, uh, do anything with the uh presidential election for the the student council that's going to take place in the second season but they most of the show most of the season was them setting that up and then we just never got to it this is one of the downfalls of trying to be so um i guess accurate to the source material is that you have a season where it feels like essentially nothing happened i mean there was some character development here and there but in terms of the grand scope of things it felt like i spent four hours of my time 
you know, really doing nothing. And so I hope that the second season, there's a lot more that gets done in terms of like the actual election um, and things like that. If like, if they introduce a plot line, I would like to see some movement on that plot line before the season ends, (laughs) rather than just like a setup for it and be like, we'll see you next time. Uh, the romance is fine, cute as always. Uh, I never got into the, as always, I never got into the uh, jokes with uh, Yuki, where uh, she was always like pretending to be like into her brother. I, that's not funny to me, um, <laughs> but a lot of people were enjoying that, so I guess I, I, I don't know. More power to them, but uh, but uh, yeah, overall, uh, I it was fine. Um, I'll watch the second season, but, uh, I'm not like excited for it per se. I sound awful, dude. We're going to have to, we can't do this. We can't do this for an hour. We can't, we got to wrap this up. <laughs> uh, then we had, uh, uh, Nokatan, my dear friend Nokatan. I'm going to speed through these, uh, where this one, uh, this one was probably, I think this is my favorite of the four that ended. I don't know why, dude. This one was just so much fun. Um, it's such a good time. Uh, and because, you know, I talk about this stuff a lot and things like that, my mom has heard about some of these shows and she hates Nokatan. It's so funny. Um, and so I'll send her gifts. I'll send her, you know, stuff like from the anime and she'll get so mad. It's hilarious. But uh, I enjoyed it. This was the only one that hasn't been officially confirmed for a second season or anything in the future. I hope it does um, because I really enjoyed this first season. And uh, I, I want to check out the manga because so much of the anime felt like it was self-aware that it wasn't anime. So it's like, how did this work in a manga? You know what I mean? Like if you've seen the season finale of No Katan, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so that would be interesting to see, but I hope they do a second season because I had a lot of fun with it. And also it, you know, it wasn't like the most high quality production. So I don't think it was like, they don't need a whole bunch of return in order to do a second season. So I hope they do that. Uh, then the last one that ended this week was uh, Senpai is an Otokonoko. And this one uh, got confirmed for a movie continuation, which will be the finale of everything. My nose is dripping. Um, but overall, I I enjoyed this show. I, I know that a lot of people were against it. Some for stupid reasons. Um, I'll just put it like that. Uh, and it was funny to see like the score... Like the score overall was like 6.9 for like most of the season. And then the finale aired and it popped all the way up here. So that's a little interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you know, it, I'll probably talk more about these shows uh, in a video on my main channel uh, whenever the season fully ends, uh, which I think is ending this next week. Um But yeah, I mean, I you know, what it was about and what it was uh what was at the core of its story i thought was really interesting and um i think it could have been done in a much better way uh i don't think the anime is great but i still think it was it was cute for what it was uh and i'll check out the movie uh if and when that ever uh, comes out around here but uh so anyway so those are the four shows that have ended so far there is still uh too many losing heroines which actually ends today when i'm filming this um tower of god season two i don't know when it's going to end because no one really knows how many episodes it's going to have i heard that it's going to be i've heard multiple things i've heard that it's 13 episodes i've also heard that it's like 24 episodes so i don't really know um and i guess we'll see about that uh we have uh, Oshinoko, which ends on Wednesday. The Elusive Samurai, I believe, ends today. I could be wrong, but I think so. Uh, and Wistoria ends on Sunday. So essentially, all these shows are about to end, um, except for Tower of God. Um, and then I'll talk more about that in the next episode, as well as in a video on my main channel. So another thing that happened is uh, we finally got an announcement. We've been waiting so long, but we finally got an announcement for, uh, um, hold on. Okay, here we go. Got it. Got it. I, I got it, guys. Don't worry. Uh, for Free Rin Season 2, uh, they had a little announcement thing here 
where uh, oh, I guess I will full screen it. This is probably copyrighted. But anyway, so she's saying to understand people's hearts better, shall we continue our journey? Uh, and then it says uh, Free Run is in uh, season two is in production. So I think that that's pretty cool. Uh, also, uh, this was today when I'm filming this, the 28th. This is the one year anniversary of the anime, uh, of the first season of the show. Um. And uh, hard to believe it's already been a year, uh, but also it is kind of nice that they did it uh, on the one year anniversary announcement because we were all waiting. We were all like, oh, no, are they not going to make a second season? Was it the first season not, uh, you know, good enough? Did it not succeed enough? But it looks like it did. And they're moving forward with this. Um, the, also, uh, they released this piece of art, which I don't know if this is from the manga or anything, or if this is like something they drew as a promotional thing for season two. But either way, I thought it was a nice piece of art on Twitter. Um, the first season uh, took about a year between its announcement uh, and the start of its uh, of, of the anime. So I think that we're probably looking at the same thing with this, where we'll probably get the second season starting in fall of 2025 and going through winter of 2026. That's my prediction, at least. Um, also, the first season, uh, I was looking, I was doing some research into this. So the first season covered 60 chapters in 28 episodes. Um, and if, if my understanding is correct, there are currently 134 chapters of the manga released right now. And uh, if they keep on the same pace that they did in the first season, then they could get almost fully caught up in a second season to where the manga is right now. That That's not accounting for a year uh, before the season starts, it's not accounting for how long the season is going to air for. Uh, so by then, you know, it won't be caught up. But that'll leave enough room for a third season and or a movie, uh, which could be fun to see. But anyway, that's all the fun stuff beforehand. The free run stuff came out like a little bit like the headlines I saw came out a little bit before I started filming. So I just kind of jotted some stuff down before we talked about it. But anyway... And uh, I'm, I'm excited. Y'all know Free Run is probably my anime of the year uh, so far, uh, as well as last year. And um, I can't wait for the second season. So, hey, guys, I'm just not feeling too well. So I'm not going to talk about the smaller stories. I'll still put the articles in the description if you guys want to check those out. But I'm only going to do the main stories because I just I, I feel like I sound unbearable to listen to. And I'm my nose is freaking out on me. So we're going to try to kind of speed through this. I hope you guys understand. I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> I, I maybe I am sick. Maybe I have a cold. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so Jujutsu Kaisen, it's over. Guys, it ended. Well, technically, the, uh, the release for the anime, or the anime, the release for the American manga, or, or the American, the English translation. Hello. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that that airs or that comes out i think either tomorrow or <coughs> monday i think i'm sick bro oh no um but it is finally over it, we've already gotten like the leaks and stuff so everybody knows how it ended and at least somewhere in the world the manga is officially over so i'm not going to talk about any spoilers that have happened in it uh number one I'm not all that invested in Jujutsu Kaisen anyway. Number two, I don't read the manga. Um, and so I'm not going to, you know, not going to be like, blah, 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 blah. Uh, one, because I don't really care. Uh, also, so here's uh, this post from uh, Manga Magura, uh, where they said Jujutsu Kaisen by Akatami Gege is confirmed to end this Monday without a part two announced. Remember, uh, because of how the season was, or the, 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 the manga was ending with like the last five chapters where things started to ramp up. Everybody thought that he was setting up a sequel. Turns out he's not doing that. He's confirmed that. Uh, the series will also get a hidden inventory uh, uh, arc anime compilation movie stage play in December. Uh, an exhibition in 2025, a new guidebook in October 2024. Um, and the series... Uh, has reached 100 million copies in circulation. Obviously, a massive hit for manga. All manga artists in Jump are commenting on the ending of Jujutsu Kaisen in the author's comment 
section. Then uh, there was uh, this thing where he, there was a little editor's note on the manga uh, where he's he's officially working on a new manga. He's not working on a sequel. Maybe he'll come back and do Jujutsu Kaisen Part 2 in like years in the future. But for now, he's moving on to something else. Uh, and his final editor's note is, thank you for the support over the last six and a half years. Let's look forward together to Gege Sensei's next work. So I think this is cool. Uh, I'm a little surprised that there's no sequel just because from what I saw from the manga, it seemed like, I was like, there's no way he could wrap this up, bro. And uh, it looks like he did. It looks like he wrapped it up and people are talking about the ending in this in a similar way to they were talking about Attack on Titan. Uh, I think it's a little worse here in the sense that more people dislike it, at least from what I can see. More people were split on the Attack on Titan ending, and it seems like more. It seems like maybe Attack on Titan's ending was like 50 50. And Jujutsu Kaisen is more like 60 40 in the dislike to like ratio. Um, at least as far as I can tell. And I think overall, people still love the manga, and they'll definitely they'll continue watching all the movies and the anime and things like that. But and Jujutsu Kaisen will definitely be remembered. It, it, it's already has its established place in anime history or anime and manga history. Um, but man, I sound awful. Okay. Uh, but, um, uh, <laughs> this is so bad. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, uh, but the uh, the ending itself, like the last five chapters, is what or is what people are going to be like. Yeah, it was great up until about there, and then uh, you know. But hey, we had all these chapters beforehand that were good. Um, like I said, I haven't read it. I'm mainly an anime watcher, and I've never really thought the anime was all that great. So uh, I'll I'll see it eventually, <sighs> assuming they finish the story in the anime. Um, which it's too big of a hit. There's no way they won't. Um, but uh, yeah. So anyways, for those of you guys who have been keeping up with Jujutsu Kaisen manga, uh, what are your thoughts on it ending? Um, I'm surprised that there's no sequel announcement, but for those of you guys who've read it, do you think there should be a sequel or are you happy with the way things ended? So the summer 2024 anime season is coming to an end, obviously, and as we always say around here, when one season ends, another begins. So uh, fall 2024 is starting in just a few days, and uh, I'm going to give you guys the top, I think, 10, I think 10, 9 or 10 uh, shows that I'm going to watch. These are my recommendations for you guys to watch uh, for the next season. So starting out, obviously, the one everybody's watching is ReZero. Season three, I don't think I need to read the freaking synopsis. Y'all know what this is. Y'all know if you like it or not. Moving on. Uh, Don to Don. I've already seen the first three episodes. I saw them um, I saw them in, uh, in the theater, uh, and I really liked them. I gave you guys uh, my thoughts on them uh, in the last episode, and uh, I'm excited to see it continue, so I would definitely be here for that. Um, do I need to read this? No, nah, this is too long. Uh, you're fine. You're, look, you guys can pause it if you want to read it. <laughs> Who doesn't know what Down to Down is about at this point? Blue Lock Season 2, uh, I thought was in my thingamabob. Why is this not there? Okay, great. Um, I'll be checking this out. Uh, enjoyed the first season, so I will be back for this. But we did hear in a leak, uh, if you guys remember, that uh, Season 2 might not be all that great. So uh, I guess we'll see um, how that goes. Next, Uzumaki. Uh, I've been talking about this forever, it feels like, and it's finally starting tomorrow, uh, at least when I'm filming this. When By the time y'all see the show, it will be today, but uh, for me, it's tomorrow, and I'm so stoked for this. Um, it's only four episodes, so I'm hoping that uh, these are the most fire four episodes I've ever seen in my entire life, but you guys know what this is. I've talked about this too much for you guys to not know what this is. Then uh, Bleach, Thousand Year Blood War, The Conflict. Um, you guys have heard me say that I think that this has been the best Bleach arc so far, or at least up there. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see it continue. But once again, like with Blue Lock, we did hear leaks about how uh, the Bleach uh, director um, might not be doing the greatest things. And uh, this 
part might not be super great. So we'll see how it goes. I'm obviously hoping and rooting for it to be great, but uh, we shall see. Scrolling down a bit here, uh, we're going down to Shangri-La Frontier Season 2. I didn't watch the first season, but I really wanted to. Um, and now with this second season coming out, um, it kind of gave me an opportunity to catch up on that and to watch it. Uh, and so hopefully I'll be checking this out if I get through Season 1. Um, then, skipping some more stuff, we have Blue Box. Uh, this is the one that... Uh, 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 telecom animation film is apparently really excited about and think is going to be like a big thing and that makes me interested and I know that you guys have probably not heard super much about this so I'm going to read the synopsis for this one do these sports cross lovers have a chance Taiki Inomata loves badminton but he has a long way to go before he can reach nationals when Taiki sees upperclassman Chinatsu Kano practicing her heart out on the girls basketball team he falls for her hard after an unexpected turn of events brings the two closer together sports might not be the first thing on their minds anymore so you guys know I'm a super big romance anime fan I love slice of life stuff and uh sports stuff you know I don't mind that much in uh, in anime. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes. Then we have, obviously, Sword Art Online. <laughs> Alternative Gun Gale Online Season 2. I never finished the first season, uh, but I'm so starved for SAO content that I will, in fact, be checking this out. Then uh, we have, uh, this is what I'm skipping, Dragon Ball Daima. Uh, I feel like I should talk about this because I feel like a lot of other people are going to watch this. I've never seen, or that's not true. I've seen very little Dragon Ball stuff. I've seen a few episodes of the anime and uh, of the original Dragon Ball Z. Um, and I've seen uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly. Uh, nothing I disliked, but just not something that I would be willing to watch as much of, of, uh, of the stuff that there is. And so uh, for those of you guys who are super big fans of Dragon Ball, I know that you guys are going to be watching this. And uh, this is the last thing that Akira Toriyama worked on before his tragic passing. So uh, I hope that everybody who does watch it loves it. But uh, sadly, it's not going to be really my thing. Then uh, going down a little bit more, we have Ranma one and a half. Uh, which we've been talking about. It leaked. You guys remember that? Uh, they just released the opening, actually, and it was pretty cute. I watched it. Um, seems to be in a similar style to Urusei Yatsura. Uh, I'm like, according to that similar leak that we heard with um, Bleach and Blue Lock, uh, this uh, is something that uh, studios are getting more interested into readapting classic anime. They did it with Urusei Yatsura. They did it with Ranma. Uh, if you want to count Spice and Wolf as a classic, they did that. But they've been doing that more lately, and they're going to continue doing that in the future. So uh, if this is successful, they're going to continue doing that type of stuff. Then we have, I think this is the last one, Demon Lord 2099, uh, which uh, I don't know how many of y'all know too much about this, so I'm going to read this synopsis. The cyberpunk metropolis Shinjuku, a massive city state bedecked with neon signs, Towering skyscrapers and the latest cutting-edge technology, it is here in the year 2099 of the Fused Era, where the legendary demon lord Veltol has, his, has had his second coming uh, five centuries in the making. But this landscape is nothing like the one he conquered all those years ago, for the fusion of magic and engineering has elevated civilization to dazzling, unprecedented heights. Veltol may have been reduced to a historical footnote, but make no mistake, this brave new world will be his for the taking. And we did hear some stuff about this as well from the leak that uh, this one might be also, oh no, but we'll see how it goes. And I think that's it for all the shows I'm checking out. Let me just scroll down here a bit more to see if there's anything that I'm checking out. And nope, I think that is it. So that those are all the shows that I will be checking out in fall 2024. So to go over it, um, one last time, uh, we have Uzumaki, we have ReZero Starting Life in Another World Season 3, Blue Box, uh, Don to Don, Bleach uh, Part 3, uh, Blue Lock, Blue Box and Blue Lock, I'm going to get mixed up all the time, uh, Sword Art Online, Gun Gale, uh, Ranma, Shangri-La Frontier, and Demon Lord 299. So it was 10. Those are the 10 I'm going to be checking out. And hey, this happened with the summer season where some of the shows that I 
was going to check out. I didn't like, so I dropped it, but I picked up different shows. Um, also, these are my tastes. So these are my recommendations. Uh, for those of you guys who uh, have different tastes than me, like if you're more interested in things like isekai or um, I don't know, anything like that, uh, then uh, then your recommendations or the shows that you're interested in are going to be different from mine. These are the shows that I'm going to be checking out um, and I would recommend that you guys check out as well. But uh, I mean, obviously my opinion might be different from yours. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm kind of reaching my limit here. So we're just going to move on to the audience rankings and everything else. I'll put a link in the description for those uh, things that you guys can check out. I'm sorry, uh, but I'm just not feeling well at all. So with the audience rankings, we have uh, the last audience rankings, I believe, for Anime Trending and Anime Corner, as well as the Anime Trending and Anime Corner anticipated lists for fall uh, 2024. Um, and then we have the Japanese uh, ratings as well. So starting with the anime trending uh, regular fall rankings, we have Days of My Stepsister, uh, which has spent two weeks at number one, Mankind Too Many Losing Heroines, uh, two weeks at number two, I Sometimes Has Her Feelings in Russian, two weeks at number three, Oceanoko Season 2 is a re-entry into the top 10 at number four, Pseudo Harum has spent two weeks at number five, Wistoria 1 Sword goes down two spots at number six, Near Automata Version 1.1a Part 2 is a re-entry into the top 10 at number seven, 2.5 Dimensional Seduction uh, is uh, went down two spots at number eight, Shoshiman How to Become Ordinary went down one spot to number nine, and actually, my dear moments uh, went down one spot to number ten. Going over to the anime corner ones, uh, we have at number one, uh, Days of My Stepsister, which went up one spot to number one. Oshinoko season two, which went up three spots to number two. I sometimes hides her feelings in Russian, which went down two spots to number three. The Cafe Terrace and its goddesses season two went up six spots to number four. Too many losing heroines went down two spots to number five. Pseudo Harum went up one spot to number six. Uh, Dimensional Seduction went down three spots to number seven. Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest went down two spots to number eight. No Longer Allowed in Another World went up eight spots to number nine. And Wistoria Wanted Sword went down two spots to number 10. Going over to the anticipated list. So this is for the next season, Fall 2024. We'll see how many of mine uh, are on these because I picked 10 shows. So we'll see. So uh, with Anime Trending, we have at number one, ReZero. Yep, mine's there. Uh, Don to Don, uh, Blue Box. I do not have Don Machi up there because I'm not interested in watching Don Machi. So I guess I don't have that. Um, Bleach Thousand Year Blood War, I have that. Blue Lock, I have that. 365 Days to the Wedding. I did hear about this and I read it and I almost put it in my thing. So this might be one that I check out um, if I drop a show or if I hear really good things about it, but uh, it's not in my top 10. Uh, Shangri-La Frontier Season 2, I have that. Ronma one and a half. I have that. And You Are Miss Servant, which is another one that I read and I thought sounded a bit interesting, but didn't make my top 10. So, uh, you know, I think, what was that? Like seven out of the 10 there we had. And then let's go over to Anime Corner with uh, Bleach Thousand Year Blood War. I have Don to Don. I have uh, ReZero. I have Blue Lock. Uh, Dragon Ball Daima. We talked about that. I think a lot of people are going to watch that but I will not be one of them. Blue Box, I have that. Spirit Chronicles, no. I hated the first season so much. I will not be watching that. Um, Don Machi, will not be watching that. Shangri-La Frontier, I have that. And Yakuza Fiance. All right. So those are all the uh, anime corner and anime trending stuff. And now going to the Japanese ratings these are from the kanto region in japan and they base this uh, it has about it has over 40 million people in it and they base this to see uh what people in japan are watching as a whole uh so uh obviously sazai sun's at the top but going down we have that time i got reincarnated as a slime season three with a 3.1 household rating my hero academia season seven with a 2.9 household rating one piece with a 2.5 uh, household rating. Everything else is usually just like kid shows and uh, the stuff that we always see there. But moving on to your comments and questions from the last episode, if you'd like to have a comment or question read by me in the next episode of the Otaku Experience, literally all you have to do is drop uh, a comment and uh, I'll talk about it. Unless it's like mean. <laughs> 
Uh, so starting out, we have uh, Zabitsuo. Uh, Zabisuto, okay. In regards to Berserk, I really, I think they really should not try to push too hard against this and let it be. Maybe it's my bias as I'm working on making anime live action films with AI, but I really think a statement to make it clear they don't agree to the use of their work being used is all they should do. If, uh, if they sue, which they may be within their rights to do, uh, is against the otaku spirit. Uh, spirit in many ways. Everyone really just wants to see a continuation of the 97 anime and not the modern CG adaptations. Fan trailers and fan content is just another way to get free promotion for the Berserk manga, but copyright holders sometimes aren't thinking that deeply about it. And they just go, oh, uh, that project is possibly making money off of our IP. In the modern time, we are very used to consuming memes and GIFs and fan content that takes IP and remixes it, giving that IP more life and cultural power. It's a win-win, but the suit's not like us. So, uh, sorry for the long message. No, you're fine. Uh, I've gotten way longer messages than that before. Um, yeah, so last week, uh, something that uh, I tried to talk about, but like I said, what happened with that episode, uh, was that a, uh, and a lot of people, me, one of them at first thought that the Berserk fan anime got canceled, but it was actually a different fan project, um, where they do like fan art and stuff and bring like the manga chapters to life, uh, that got taken down they deleted everything and they deleted their Twitter account as well. And so that just heightened the fear of something happening with uh, the Black Swordsman anime. And uh, so I hope that doesn't happen. But yeah, I agree with uh, studios. Uh, just, yeah, I, 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 I really, I don't like studios. <laughs> uh, Zabisuto also says, so good. I saw it twice. I think you're talking about uh, Don to Don. From cinematography perspective, it is absolute perfection. There are no wasted frames, easily animated the year. I completely agree. I was hooked and invested. I posted on X to G Kids account that I would gladly watch the entire anime in theaters if they decided to go that route. Uh, it's an anime that almost needs to be seen in theaters. It's, it's an amazing production. And yeah, th- we talked about this in that episode where... The director at the beginning in an interview was like, yeah, I'm just a nerd who likes to like draw uh, panels or like uh, storyboards all the time. And he like pulled out this big old fat book of like all these different ways that he could do the same shot and convey the same message. But what would be the most effective? It was really cool. He really knew what he was doing to um in terms of cinematography. Uh, and yeah, I love that. And uh, yeah, I would have done the exact same thing. I definitely would have watched the full anime if they had let us. Uh, and let's talk about uh, just sends a heart. So thank you. And guys, that does it for this episode of the Otaku Experience. Thank you so much for watching. And if you prefer to listen to the show, you can always listen to the Otaku Experience podcast on Spotify. And if you want to keep up with me outside of this YouTube channel, so you can subscribe to me at my main YouTube channel, King Tanic. Follow me on uh, Instagram at King Tanic or follow me on Twitter at King Tanic Israel. Uh, with that being said, guys, this episode comes to a close. I will see you all next time when I'm hopefully feeling better. <laughs>